Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to this week's Sacramento Real Estate Market Review. And boy, do we have some good information today. The numbers came out for April, and they are absolutely shocking. Seriously, these numbers are really crazy. The market is really heating up right now, and the numbers don't lie. So we're going to go over some stats and facts so that you can make informed decisions when you're out there looking at real estate and shopping to either purchase and or sell your home. Welcome to Macro Thinker. If you're new to the channel, please smash that like button. When you smash the like button, it tells YouTube to share the content with more people. And please tap that subscribe button to see more weekly videos on finance, real estate, and investing. My name is Lewis. Let's get it. All right, so let's jump right into it. Up on the screen, I have a chart that shows the number of homes for sale, sold, and pended. And as I mentioned, we're going over the Sacramento real estate market. So for purposes of discussion, we are gonna be looking at Sacramento, Placer, and El Dorado County. In light green, we have the number of homes for sale. Dark green, we have the number of homes sold. And the red line is the number of homes that are pending for sale. So as of April of 2021, there are 1,315 housing units currently for sale. That is the amount of inventory that is currently listed on the market. The dark green bar indicates the number of units sold, which is just under about 23 homes that actually closed escrow. And the red line is the number of pended sales, so homes that are under contract that's currently sitting pretty close to about 2600 so I always like to look back a year just to kind of see where we are trending so if you go back to April of 2020 you can see that we had nearly 3,000 homes for sale we had about 1500 homes sold and about 1500 homes pending so what does that tell us one thing that I want to point out is that real estate market practically shut down in March of 2020 and April of 2020 due to the pandemic. But even with that pandemic in place, the number of units that were listed for sale was more than double. So inventory has actually gone down by about 55% in one year. Number of homes sold has actually gone up about 20%. In April of 2020, about 1,500 homes actually closed closed escrow. Last month, we saw about 2,300 homes close escrow. So what's interesting is there's more real estate activity, but there is less inventory. The other thing that I want to point out is the number of homes that have actually gone under contract. 12 months ago, we had about 1,600 units go under contract. Last month, we saw about 2,600. So based on the trend here that we're seeing with this red line, we're seeing more and more real estate activity that will lead us into the peak selling months, which are generally speaking, June, July and August. And you can see that indicated um, with last year's data here in June, July, August. You could see the number of units that actually went pended were higher and the number of homes that were actually sold and closed escrow were higher. The next chart up on the screen, as I've mentioned in the past, is absolutely one of my favorite metrics to determine value in the marketplace. It is the average price per square foot. So as of last month, April of 2021, we saw the price per square foot go north of $300. We are currently sitting at about $307 per square foot. And if you remember from my last video, I indicated that was entirely possible when we were reviewing the March numbers. Now, if you go back a year, we were sitting at about $254 per square foot on average. We've seen nearly 20% price appreciation in just one year, which is absolutely insane. It is likely not sustainable at this pace, but it's something that we definitely want to be aware of and we want to pay attention to. The other thing that I think is really interesting, if you're just looking at the trends year to date, you can see that in January of 2020, the average price per square foot was 279 it went up by nearly 10 bucks to 286 then up by a little over $10 to 297 and then up by about 10 bucks per square foot to 307 so if it is increasing on average by about 10 bucks per square foot each and every single month let's say that continues through the peak selling season we're likely to see the main numbers at around 317 the June numbers at about 327. We don't know at this point how high it can actually go, 
but the trend is certainly up. We're going to pay attention to this and we're going to monitor it. And let's hope that things kind of calm down a little bit and we see a plateau. Next chart up on the screen is the average days on market and the sales price versus the original list price. So this data is very telling as well. As of last month, we are sitting on an average days on market of about 14. So homes are selling within two weeks on average. I can tell you from experience here, if the homes are priced correctly, they are selling much faster than 14 days. Usually they are selling within maybe two to three days or one weekend. And that will literally depend on when the seller is willing to review offers. Some sellers will review offers the same day. And you see some of these homes that they don't even last on the market for more than 24 to 48 hours. If we do a one year look back, homes were sitting on the market for about 27 days in April of 2020. So that's down by about 52%. Now regarding the sales price versus the original list price, and it's expressed as a percentage here, I think this data is very, very fascinating. So for the most part, if you go back a year, homes generally sold within one to 2% of their original list price. So homes were selling for about 99% to maybe 100% of the original list price. But as of this year, starting in February, we started to see that number pick up and homes have started to trade over the list price. So it is getting more and more competitive. This means that buyers are consistently having to bid over the original list price in order to secure a property and put it under contract. As of last month, on average, homes traded at 104% of the original list price. Now, in my opinion, this is probably the highest I have ever seen homes selling above the list price. It could be some type of record or at least something that we haven't seen in many, many years at this point. And what's interesting is that some homes are selling well above that figure, not just 4% over, they're selling 5, 10% above the original list price, which is pulling that average up. And the last chart that I like to look at is the month's worth of inventory. And the way this works is very simple. As an example, let's say you have one month's worth of inventory. Well, if nothing else hits the market, nothing goes on the MLS, nothing else goes for sale, it will take roughly one month to get rid of all of the housing inventory that is listed for sale. And so that's how it's measured. Well, as of last month, we're sitting at 0.6 months worth of inventory. So less than a one month supply. And if we just look back one year, we had nearly two months, which was still extremely low. And as I've mentioned in the past, anything less than three months is generally what we consider a seller's market. Anything from three to six is a little bit more neutral and anything six months and higher is what we would consider more of a buyer's market. So needless to say, there is still very little inventory currently available on the market. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for the charts, but as always, I like to leave you with some of my personal thoughts on the market and kind of where I think we're headed and how we can navigate through this housing market. So for starters, let's recap what we just discussed. We know that inventory is still very low. We know that homes are trading on average for about 104% of the original list price. And we know that real estate activity has actually picked up about 20% over last year. So we're seeing more and more transactions taking place, which is an indication that the market is getting more and more competitive. Now, given that we are in May of 2021, the general selling season or selling cycle, if you will, things tend to heat up in May, June, July, August, September, and then they start to taper off slightly. Keeping that in mind, if mortgage rates continue to stay low, I anticipate that we are gonna see more and more competition chasing a low level of inventory. So unless something major changes in the marketplace, those that are out there looking to purchase their first home or purchase any home in this market for that matter, are really going to have to get very aggressive and competitive. Couple pointers. I would make sure that you are pre-qualified up front. I would have your proof of funds ready, and I would make sure that you're ready and willing to act extremely quickly. In other words, if a home hits the market that fits your criteria and it's in an area you like, I would try to look at that home within 24 hours and try to make an educated decision as to whether or not that home would work for your personal situation. 
And I would certainly recommend leaning on the professionals that you are working with, not just your real estate agent, but also your loan officer. Stay in constant communication and make sure that you're armed with the information that you need to make an educated decision. With that said, I still think there is an insane amount of value in this marketplace. You have to remember that real estate is very inefficient, which means that there is always room in the marketplace to find deals or locate value. It's all about finding motivated sellers. So just because homes on average are selling for 104% of the original list price, it doesn't mean that you can't purchase a home that's under market. Maybe you can track down somebody who's motivated and needs to sell quickly. So if you have the ability and means to close very fast, you might be a perfect fit even if you're slightly under the list price or slightly under what the appraised value might be. My point being, hang in there, make a lot of offers, be willing to put in the work, and eventually you will be rewarded for the right behaviors. You will get that dream home, you'll be able to put that property under contract, and you'll find a really great deal. All right, so that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you found the content and information useful. Please leave your comments below, and if you haven't done so already, please consider liking and subscribing to see more weekly videos on finance, real estate, and investing. Thank you again, take care.